Good evening. Sydney's stubborn flood waters are barely receding tonight, and only now is the extent of the devastation becoming clear. Well, it came on quickly. I mean, with all, all that heavy rain, there was no warning this time. It was about, I don't know, three o'clock on the Monday morning. I heard noises from outside and I went outside to investigate and there was about half a metre of water already on the ground. First thing we did was get Carl out and there was like quite a few of the SES and there was a few other people in his wheelchair and we lifted him into a vehicle and by that time the water had risen considerably. They had to bring in uh, the, the boats to get us to the higher ground. He loved it, he loved the little boat ride. <laughs> He thought that was great. <laughs> Get, say, lifelong guardianship. Carl has to say, yes, he wants it. And how's he going to do that? The people that most need it can't get it because they don't have the ability to communicate that fact. Yeah, look, I'm, I'm getting on in years. I don't have to tell you that. I've got health issues. And he can't stay living with me. As much as he would like to, it's just not realistic for him to remain living with me. That's not to say that I'm going to step back, you know, my intend, I intend taking Carl home for weekends and we'll still go on holidays, you know, things like that, and I'll still get my hair pulled. <laughs> I mean, it, it's unrealistic to expect Carl to you know, make himself a coffee or anything like that. I think more choices about what he does, where he goes, you know, what he eats and all that sort of thing. I feel more at ease by the fact that I know he's going to be in a place where he's going to be looked after and he's been given the chance to develop some skills. It's a, it's a really nice house, it's friendly people and yeah, I think so. Once you get to know, well you've seen Carl, once you get to know him, <laughs> he's a really happy person you know, and he likes to interact with other people. Yeah, well, for Carl, I think one of the biggest issues with Carl is, is the lack of choices in his life. I became an advocate, and as soon as I did that, you know, it, 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 it changes the quality of service. If, if somebody in a group home has no representation and an advocate becomes involved, you, you, it's surprising the amount of changes, it, positive changes, it makes to that person's life. I see advocacy as a bridge from segregation to becoming a part of the community. 